Welcome, everyone, to another episode of One Hour, One Decision. I am Chris. And I am Tom. And usually we take six minutes to play a random game on Xbox Game Pass, but this time we are doing a very special interview with the folks at Splash Team Games. And I apologize because I know during our our uh, episode, I said Tiny Build was the developer, so I apologize for that now. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Romain and Marie from from Splash Team Games here who developed their... Um, Tiny, tiny kin, and super excited to have you both here on the show. And um, how are you guys doing today? Great, great. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, if you don't mind, um, if you don't mind explaining to the folks listening who you guys are and what do you guys do at Flash Team. Uh, so, I am Mary, the co-founder and uh, co. Creative director of uh, Splash Team on Tinykin. And uh, I'm Romain, uh, also creative director, but uh, so this is the role we were sharing with uh, Marie on, uh, on the project, but we also both are, um, we, we, we have our own specialties. So on my side, I'm, I'm more into game design and programming, and Marie is more into uh, writing and animation, uh, among other things, because you know, as indies, we have many hats, but yeah. uh, these are the main uh, things. Awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, as as people who are listening probably should know, you guys did develop Tinykin. So how long was that development cycle for for Tinykin? Marie, do you want to? Yeah. <laughs> you want to answer? Well, I can answer. Can answer. Yes, you can answer. Uh, it was uh, uh, three years uh, in total. Oh wow! Uh, but the, the the first year was uh, a little bit, uh, I would say, chaotic. Uh, the project started with uh, a game jam in uh, 2019, the global game jam, and uh, so after the game jam, we did a break because. Initially, we didn't especially want to make a full game out of this small game uh, called uh, Bubble Town. Uh, and then we started to, you know, to develop a bigger game. And after months, it became uh, Tinykin. But uh, yeah, and, and, and Tiny Build arrived uh, later as well. We, with Tiny Build, it was only two, year, uh, two years, but uh, in total, it was uh, three uh, what other platforms are is is this game on? Uh, all the platform like P- PS5, PS4, uh, Xbox Series, Xbox uh, One, uh, Switch, PC, everywhere. Oh, everywhere! There you go. Yeah. <laughs> not 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 mobile. Uh, yeah, for the moment, and maybe but, uh, never. But <laughs> uh, probably never. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, but who knows? Never say never. Is, is there a particular reason why mobile was left out? Is it hard to develop for or? Uh, um, actually, uh, uh, the, the, the game um, uh, had three uh, development phases. Uh, so initially it was the Game Jam game made in two days for the Global Game Jam. So the name of the game was uh, Bubble Town, and this game is actually available for free on uh, itch.io. It's a oh. website who is um, uh, providing small games for, for free. A, a, a lot of games on this platform are um, not even m- uh, made by professionals. You know, it's, it's a lot of uh, um, amateur games. And there is also a lot of game jam games, so you can find Bubble Town uh, on this uh, website. Uh, and then there were um, another version of this game uh, called Spears. So it is from a French word meaning uh, minion. Uh, it's the French equivalent of minion, uh, Sbir, uh, with a Z at the end, like uh, there is many minions. All right. So and and this game was more looking like a uh, Pikmin mm, as a, a, okay. a roguelike, you know, uh, okay. the, the Pikmin uh, uh, recipe, but in a roguelike. 
the levels were were procedurally generated and it was not uh, 3D at all. It was uh, 2D and top down. So it was a very, very different game. And at the end of the year um, 2019, we decided to reboot it as a 3D platformer and it became uh, Tiny Kim. It's very interesting. And there is many reasons why we, we did that. I, I, I don't know if I should dig into details right now, but uh, <laughs> these are the main, uh, you know, steps. Yeah. Um, awesome. And so what, I mean, outside of developing games and stuff like that, what kind of games do you, do you guys play outside of, outside of developing them? Um, so we start to, to work on Tiny Kin because Roma and me, um, are a fan of uh, platformer style since okay. we are a kid. So I really like, for example, uh, Rayman Games, Mario Sunshine, okay. uh, stuff like this. And uh, Roma is a big fan of uh, Crash Bandicoot series. Uh, I really like um, Sonic uh, 3D, you know, like uh, Sonic yeah, Battle yeah. 2 and stuff like this. So, so um, we are a big fan of this kind of game and we really like uh, Pikmin games. So we combined the, the both and we did Tiny Kin. Um, but um, uh, at the moment, I really like a uh, management game. So it's okay. a bit different, like uh, uh, Stardew Valley or, I don't know, uh, uh, recently uh, Traveler's Rest, for example. And uh, Roma is more looking for arcade games. Yeah, that, that's probably the, the main difference between... Uh... Uh, Mary and I. Uh, maybe she's more into um, very story-driven and uh, more like uh, ge- uh, management game. And management. <laughs> I like games. stories, but not a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and probably I'm more into yeah arcade, very um, uh, immediate and and uh, action stuff. And that's interesting because on Tiny King there there is kind of a mix between these two worlds. I mean, not, not management, but uh, Tiny King is highly story-driven, but it is still um, very immediate and kind of arcade uh, game. You know, the, the controls are very simple. Uh, the animations are very um, uh, fast and, and uh, you know, it's yeah. it could have been an action game with this kind of controls and with, yeah. with this kind of uh, art style and and yeah, so it's it's, it's an interesting uh, reunion between two different um, uh, tastes in, in in terms of games. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I I, I got asked, did, did you get a chance to play Shredder's Shredder's Revenge? Yeah, we played it at Pax Marie. Yeah. Oh, remember yeah, last right. year <laughs> but we didn't uh, play the full game but uh, we tried the demo at, at PAX East because we were at PAX East with uh, Tinykin last All year right. uh, there were a, a big booth on, on uh, the Tiny Build booth and uh, it was uh, yeah it, it, it was great they, they did it well <laughs> so you guys kind of touched on this earlier um, but what was that what was that development loop like, like the iterative process? I mean, you, you guys said it was the game was very different when you when you first created it or started the creation. But what what made you guys start to like, you know, really hone in on, OK, this is the kind of game that we want to actually build and, and you know put out there for, for people to try out? Um, so for, for the beginning, we start with uh, the game uh, from the game jam. And after that, we um, we uh, worked on a demo for publisher. Uh, and in uh, um, one year later, we were contact- contacted by t- uh, Tiny Build and uh, we start to work with them. And after that, we worked uh, room per- by room. Like we start to uh, work on a room, like the living room, for example. And we uh, start to do the LD on this uh, level. Uh, so we start to, to do the LD with uh, a software named uh, ProBuilder in, uh, for, for the room. And after that, we uh, asked for um, concept artist, uh, d- director artistic, uh, art director, sorry, 
uh, to do some uh, artwork and uh, we got the view of what the room will look like. And after that, the, the artist uh, start to work on uh, the level design and start to do the stuff we need to, uh, to, <laughs> to uh, I don't know how to say, but uh, the yeah. room being graphics. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, is the question um, ab about the production in itself, the production process, or more about how did we made, uh, how did we make our choices in terms of uh, game design for, for instance? I mean, it's I guess it's a little bit of both. I, I, we're just I, I know I have I have curiosity in the whole game development process and like and especially getting games into into Game Pass, you know. How does that, um, you know, when we had the our previous interview, it was about like, uh, you know, the publishers helped push the uh, push the the game to to Microsoft and stuff like that. And and did you guys have any sort of involvement into getting, you, you know, bringing your game into into Microsoft? Be like, hey, we have this game, we wanna we wanna push this on Game Pass or whatever it is. Like, you know, were you involved with that? Or was that all the publisher at that point? Actually, uh, uh, this was very different than the um, um, production process um, because um, in, in terms of uh, production and, and the choices that we have made in terms of uh, game design, it was very uh, iterative and not um, linked to the fact that it was supposed to be on Game Pass at all. I mean, uh, Microsoft did not interfere uh, at all in our process and it was mainly... Uh, um, dealt uh, between Microsoft and TinyBuild, but we, um, us as developer, uh, we didn't have to talk with uh, Microsoft. Um, but but this is not always uh, like that. Uh, sometimes, if you are in this with no publishers and you want to have your game on on, on the Game Pass, because um, most of the time it is very interesting uh, uh, financially speaking to have a game on Game Pass because as you know the game is provided for free for the Game Pass subscribers so Microsoft uh, gives a certain amount of money uh, in advance a bit like being on Epic Game Store for free for instance uh, so this is interesting whether you have a publisher or, or not uh, and of course, if you don't have any publisher, uh, you have to do it yourself. You have to find the contact at Microsoft and start talking with them. But uh, hopefully for us, uh, at TinyBuild, they have very, very good uh, relationship with Microsoft. So they negotiated this, this deal for us. So it, it was very comfortable for us because we only had to focus on the production and not in, you know, not dive into the negotiations uh, for the Game Pass. It sounds liberating that you were able to just kind of focus on your game and, and yeah. make it the best game yeah, possible yeah. and not have to worry about that was you know, very wheeling and dealing, the, the, the financials. Very pleasant, <laughs> very comfortable. I mean, we, we, we add our stress on other sure. topics, but uh, this one was uh, um, managed uh, outside of the studio. And um, speaking about Game Pass, like, do you do you guys happen to play? I, I know you guys kind of mentioned a lot of games that you, the types of games you guys like to play outside of developing them. But are there are there particular games on Game Pass that you guys enjoy playing right now? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's uh, Outer Wild. Oh, nice! Okay. Yeah. Outer Wild, yeah, yeah. It's a really good game. Yeah, on, on my side, um, to be honest, and maybe you will shame me, but I don't have a, a subscription <laughs> to the Game Pass. Yes. But I, I play games that are on Game Pass, but I'm not sure uh, uh, what games uh, are actually on Game Pass. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. But uh, for <laughs> instance, okay. recently I played, um, I'm not even sure it is on Game Pass. Uh, for example, a very good game called uh, Solar Ash, but I think it is on Epic Game Store. Uh, it was exclusive to Epic Game Store, but not necessarily Game Pass. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know 
exactly, but I'm pretty sure I've played very good Game Pass games. I, I just don't know they were on Game Pass. <laughs> well, yeah, they move, you know, they, yeah. they go on and drop off. So, you know, what, what's on there today might not be on there tomorrow. And so, you know, yeah, that's okay. But, but the thing is that the, 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 the time for the deal uh, is not always the same. And for example, for Tanikin, we negotiated a year, which is a lot. Most of the time, it's, it is just a month for, you know, two months, three months. But uh, for us, it was a year. So it was a very, very big deal, actually. That's interesting uh, that, uh, you know, you get different times, I guess, based on your publisher and based on the deal. And that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I mean, this segues perfectly into our next question about what what is it that you, in, like, as a developer, um, enjoy about or, or like or dislike about being on Game Pass, like being on the service and stuff like that? I mean, I, I, from why from why I take it they they give you guys a, a an amount up front in terms of uh, in terms of the contract for how long the the game is on game pass but you know th is there anything else that you guys can give us in terms of insight about you know the pluses and minuses of uh, as a developer on um, being on game pass because there's there's been a lot of conversation about people like saying you know oh game pass is not good for the developers it's not good for I was like I don't know how that I, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you guys and your your input on, on how that. Not sure there is much to say. Do you want to say something, Mary, about that? Uh, no, I don't know. I, I think uh, it's uh, it's really cool to to be on the Game Pass for the p financial aspect, uh, obviously, and uh, for the the other thing, it's like you your your game is not. Um, uh, I don't know how to say in English. Sorry. Uh, sell uh, sell uh, less in the other platform if you are on, on the Game Pass. So it mm. needs some reflection uh, before sign with Game Pass for that that reason. But for um, I think it's pretty good <laughs> for the uh, the I don't know I don't know how to say so Roman go go for it. What, uh, <laughs> what is it you sorry. you want to say in in French? What is the word you are missing? Uh, C'est bien pour le bouche à oreille la publicité. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The being on Game Pass, it creates some kind of um, um, I don't know how to say in English nicer. But when people, you know, when players so talks, you, you know, that they, they, they talks to each other, it's 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 a form of very organic marketing because uh, you don't especially need to do more marketing because the game pass provides a lot of visibility so for pc sure. and xbox players they uh, a lot of players uh, uh, know that the game exists uh, um, but you don't especially need to put a lot of marketing efforts uh, in it uh, i mean at least for pc and xbox because of the, the i mean thanks to the game pass uh, i would say yeah so this is an interesting aspect, but uh, and I think Marie said said it all. Uh, so financially speaking, it is very interesting for us because the Game Pass deal actually made the game profitable day one um, because right. the, the amount of money that Microsoft uh, paid us it was superior to the cost of the, the game. Uh, right. I mean, the, the total cost of the game, including marketing, including porting to consoles, including, I mean, the, the full package was uh, uh, funded thanks to the Game Pass. So this is huge for us because uh, it's uh, not rare that uh, 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 video game studios need to close because they don't manage to make their yeah. game profitable so it's it's a, it's a big uh, advantage uh, for for us and um and yes um you, you may think that being on game game pass uh, uh, kind of uh, you know kills the uh, the sales on other platforms but it depends i think for tiny kid it was a bit the case because the game is not selling a lot on Steam, it is not selling a lot on Switch. It is the, on the only place where the game uh, got success is uh, uh, Game Pass. Oh, um, actually, do you guys have any like interesting stories or whatnot um, 
during the development how many I, before I ask, actually, how many people were developing this game? Like, I see, obviously, you guys, and then how many? You mentioned some concept artists and stuff like that. Uh, in total, like, how many people do you think actually worked on Tiny Um Depends on the teams. Um, at Splash Team, we were only, uh, I mean, only. It's already kind of a lot for, for an indie game, but we were around 15 uh, okay. in total. Uh, not always full time, and some were freelancers, some were uh, employees. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a very um, diverse uh, team in terms of uh, um, you know contracts and 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 status and and uh, sure. jobs. Uh, but uh, it's Im it's important to uh, mention also uh, all the people at uh, Tiny Build. Uh, there were also a team dedicated to porting in uh, in England. Uh, there were a team dedicated to QA uh, uh, in Romania, um, and there were also a team. Uh, so each time it's different companies, and there were also a, 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 a two French uh, companies for uh, one for um, uh, translations uh, localization, and one for. Uh, uh, producing all the um, animated sequences. So if you remember, there is this Android, Android uh, uh, cinematic sequences uh, in the game. So this yeah. was made uh, by, um, uh, I would say, um, uh, cartoon, you know, animation sure. uh, yeah. uh, yes. company. Uh, so it was not made uh, internally. Uh, but the animations of the NPCs and, and the animations of Milo have, have been made uh, internally by, by Mary, uh, actually. So hey. all the in-game animations uh, are uh, Mary's. Nice. Yes. Awesome. It, it looks awesome. So yeah, well, yeah, well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good stuff there. But yeah, like, um, was there any sort of like interesting stories and stuff like that that you guys happen to like things that just like really struck struck you during the the development process like we call it an anecdote you know uh, maybe a little story or something that uh, of something interesting or surprising that happened during your development um maybe um so every time nintendo made an announcement during the development we were a bit afraid of uh, pikmin uh, 4 <laughs> <laughs> But just a little, because Tinykin, it, it's really not like Pikmin, so that's And fine. you want to know, the funny part is that when uh, um, Nintendo finally announced Pikmin 4, and well, the, the, yeah. when the first uh, uh, video, the first trailer was, uh, was shown, uh, a lot of comments, uh, especially French comments, were saying, sure. oh, wow. They did copy Tinykin. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that, that's uh, a, that was quite. That's a, I feel like fun. that's a good compliment, right? Yeah, At this yeah. Point because Nintendo is Nintendo, so <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool to hear. Um, the final thing I wanted to ask you guys. Oh, well, there's one more question after this, but final thing I wanted to ask in terms of our format here. Um, what do you, what what would you say to someone that that wants to get into game game development? Like, what are the things that you've learned as you guys have built this game and and, and done other things, um, like that advice for someone that wants to get into in de in development and how to get how to get into it and you know build games? Marie, um, for a studio, uh, I can say, uh, don't underestimate underestimate your budget and your timing. Yeah. Uh, that's that's already a pretty advanced uh, advice. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when, when you get to that point, you are already, you know, a game developer. I mean, you, you are preparing a very solid production. But... Uh, when you just want to start, I would say the, the best way to make games is to make games. So don't be afraid to start small. And uh, also very important thing, uh, uh, always try to um, to show what you are doing on the social media, on you know, on YouTube, on 
you know, show it to your friends, show it to your family, show it to... Because games are made to be shared. And uh, when you are, especially when you are uh, starting, uh, when you are um, uh, debuting, I don't know if that exists in English, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. when, when yeah. You, especially when you are a beginner, but not only uh, beginners, but... Uh, uh, it's, it's it's very important to constantly seek for feedback and advice and uh, uh, sharing is the probably the the, um, the most important thing and uh, uh, people are very lucky these days because we are living in the, in a century where internet is more and more powerful every day there is uh, tons of resources that are accessible for free. Maybe sometimes it's a bit hard to know where to start, but uh, that's why it's important to, you know, to to talk and to share and to, uh, I don't know, participate uh, to game jams and you know, download Unity or Unreal Engine or whatever and start, you know, uh, reading and watching tutorials and. Yeah, uh, to make mm -hmm. games, you 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 have to make games, <laughs> <laughs> small ones, and then a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And, you know, right. just, like you said earlier, like iterate on that process just to get. Yeah, it's it's uh, for example, if you want to climb a mountain, it's very rare that you can instantly be on top. You have to go step by step. Yeah. And um, one other question. Uh, I mean, you you guys don't have to answer this, but I'm nervous. You can get some, or <laughs> I don't know what it what, is. But um, any chance of Tinykin two? And any any, any ideas about that? Or <laughs> is this this is the the the? It's a trap, Mary. <laughs> <It's a> trap. <laughs> we we fell into a trap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, this is not in our plans right now. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, it's all in tiny build ends uh, because they they own the IP and they they can decide with, with us, of course, because we still have uh, our world to say. But um, this is not uh, in any plan right now. But but the IP is still there, so maybe one day there will be something. So what, are, what is what is oh sorry i was gonna say is there is there something that you're working on that you are able to you know say you know even just maybe a vague <laughs> i know yeah. i know there's you know there's, there's non-disclosures and you can't talk about details of things that you're working on but <laughs> maybe, 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 are, maybe. Are, are you working on a game i guess you could say yes or no yeah right? yeah <laughs> we're actually working on two games yeah. Uh, Marie yeah. has one, and I'm taking care of the other one. And Ooh. so, Marie, do, do you want to go into some vague teasing right now for your <laughs> game? <or? laughs> okay. It's a management game. Okay. Um, where you are... Um, uh, I don't know if I want to say more about it, but it's a management game uh, in a snowball. All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, and... it, it's enough for the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it will be kind of the same for me. Let's say uh, I'm working on, a, on an action game. I mean, bo both are at Splash Team. It is just that uh, there is two different projects, but we are actually sharing resources and, you know, we help each other. But uh, sure. We, we have two distinct uh, projects and, and mine is more uh, an action game. And what I would say for now is that I am I got very inspired by two games, uh, Bridges Mansion and Katamari Damacy. And oh. this is uh, all I will say for now. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely excited to try both of those out. Um, guys, uh, Marie, Romain, I, I really appreciate you guys coming on the show. And, 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 you know, shedding a little bit of light on, on the development process. And, and, and it was, it was really awesome to have you guys on the show and, and, uh, yeah, hope, hope I'm excited to really try out your, your two new projects whenever it comes out. So, and you're anytime you guys want to, want to be back on the show to, to, uh, to promote it, please, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can. 
So, well, yeah, thank in, you. in thank you, two or three years, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Hey, look, we got, we just got a little bit of more information. <laughs> like yeah. We know where they are in the process. <laughs> less than three, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. All right. All right. Well, that is this episode. Then thank you guys again for listening, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah. Thank you, Lars. Thanks, everybody. Bye.